Oliver Garish was a six foot three, 270 pound pedophile who sexually assaulted more than 500 children in the United States. His preferential victims were prepubescent females, but his victims included a three year old child. How on earth does a person become this demented and get away with it for so dang long without being arrested? Welcome to Profiling Evil. If you're new to our channel, thanks for joining. And if you're one of my university students or a longtime channel member, welcome back. Thanks for your support. Either way, please take a moment and click that like and subscribe button. Ring the bell so you get all of our informative videos. Now let's talk about pedophilia. Pedophilia is a psychiatric disorder where an adult or an older adolescent experience a primary or exclusive sexual attraction to prepubescent children. These are boys and girls who typically are under the age of age 12. In order for the predator to be classified as a pedophile, most experts suggest that they need to be at least 16 years old and they need to be at least five years older than the victim. The term pedophilia comes from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, which defines it as an intense and recurrent sexual urge, including fantasies about prepubescent children. Now, there's other groups that classify it, like the International Classification of Diseases, who defines the disorder as a sustained, focused, and intense pattern of sexual arousal manifest by persistent sexual thoughts, fantasies, urges, or behaviors, but again, involving prepubescent children. Pop culture simply classifies it as any sexual interest in children or the act of child sex abuse. And there's a problem there. The experts recommend caution when we throw terms like this around because some sexual crimes against children are not caused by pedophiles. A pedophile has a primary or exclusive interest in prepubescent children. Now let's talk about Oliver Ben Garish for a minute. Garish, who went by the nickname Big Ben, was diagnosed as a pedophile. Over the course of his criminal history, he was arrested numerous times. He served a short period of time in prison before being released. But over and again, this guy would talk his way out of arrests, or just get short prison terms or, or jail sentences. His last conviction was in 1985, and that was the time when they proved he was a serial predator and they took it serious. He remained in prison until his death in 2001. In fact, a little interesting side note, when he died, the warden called me up and said that he had willed all of his personal property over to me, which included his diaries, where all of his deviant thought were. It's really quite interesting to read. Well, I spent hundreds of hours interviewing this offender and ultimately got confessions from him on nearly 525 sexual assaults of children. His crimes reached from Utah to Missouri and then south to Arkansas. I remember asking him about how he got out of trouble so many times, and he just smiled and said, I appear honest to the cops, and they believe me. Well, toward the end of his personal reign of terror, Garish discovered that befriending people from faith communities was the easiest way for him to access their children. He took advantage of their trusting attitudes their, and their personal goodness and values, and he turned it against them. By acting like he wanted to convert to their faith, the doors would fly open and the children would become accessible. Listen as Ben Garish describes some of his crimes. Now, this video was taken many years ago I, at a time when I was using Garish to train police investigators. I would actually take him out of prison and take him to conferences where I would have him teach investigators how predators think. I think you're going to find this interesting as you see how investigators were trained in the dynamics of investigating and then interviewing serial sexual predators of children. I'm Oliver Garish. Before I get started, I want to 
say that I'm a participant in the Phase Three Sex Offender Program at SSD down to Utah State Prison. While everybody else was having fun up the house, Billy grabbed Cindy, told me, come on, let's go down to the bar and show you something new. And that's where I learned to molest little girls. Later on, several weeks later, I was raped at school. Hurt quite bad. My dad got all embarrassed about it. Instead of coming to my aid, literally, I got beat again, called stupid, told if I was a real boy, this wouldn't have happened. Dad hushed it up at school, took me out of town to a major teaching center, hospital, where they closed that area up uh, surgically. It's been closed ever since. I eventually molested a young girl, viciously attacked the young girls, perhaps a better way of saying it. A seven-year-old girl dragged her off her bicycle into a restroom at a gas station, forced her to do oral sex on me threatened to find her home and burn it down with her and her family in it, as she ever told. To her credit, she told. I got arrested. The child will trust you. They'll open right up to you then. I had a child tell me her father was molesting her because I was on a one-on-one -on -one level with her. And then I did the same. Get your children comfortable with talking with you. Define for them very clearly. You've heard the good touch, the bad touch. Beware of the stranger. I think I would take it a little bit further. Tell them to beware of any touching that's under the clothing or in the genital area, regardless of who does it. Okay, I targeted ages from 3 to 13. I had five male victims and approximately 500 female victims. The question is, along those same lines, could I look at any child without any sexually deviant or otherwise thoughts in my head? To this day, at this time, no. The thoughts still occur. They come back. But the thing I'm learning in therapy is not that the thoughts come back, but what I do with them. Uh, she wants to know, basically, if I were released to an unrestricted setting, how dangerous would I be due to the therapy I've gone through? I think I would be dangerous, and that's a realistic appraisal of myself at this point in time. I saw Cindy accidentally, in fact, I was in Chicago on a business trip and saw her in a mall, and she handled it quite well. She, she really unloaded on me, which was her right, but said she'd gotten over it, and we never met again from that point on. Billy Gage, the guy that molested me, committed suicide, took a coward's way out. Drove his car into a bridge of Butte, Chicago at age 22 at over 100 miles an hour. The question is, how do I see my future as a result of this? I have agonized over that for a long time before coming up here today. And to be absolutely blunt with you, I don't think I have a future. Were you confronted on a lot of your victims by police? I had, out of the 500, I had seven times I was arrested. And uh, of those seven, that's not 85 and 82, okay? Seven others and nine altogether. Of those seven, I walked on all of them. Do you know where the police went wrong? Yeah, they believed me. Were my desires so strong that had I had my own children, would I have abused them? Yes, I probably would have. I had no limits. Knowing myself better than anybody else, if I were on a pro board, would I now let myself out at this time? No, I would not. You're welcome. Mr. King? Uh, I'm sorry, I hope I didn't give any final statements because I didn't do No, I uh, don't know what to give for a final statement. <laughs> I have no idea. Last time I gave a final statement, I got six to life. <laughs>
you should go over to our channel memberships and sign up for the Academy level. It's the only place you're going to be able to get content like this on a lot of different profiling and investigative principles. We'll explore them more deeply and we'll even have some one-on-ones where we get together and chat about the content that you're learning. Thanks so much and let's get back to this video. Well, I also worked with Garish to share publicly how parents can protect their children from people like him. Listen closely as he speaks to reporter Paul Murphy of KTVX News in Salt Lake City. Tonight on News for Utah. How can parents protect their kids from abuse? Learn from a man who molested more than 500 children. A story no parent should miss. And now. News for Utah at 5.30. The average child molester strikes 300 victims before he's caught. So how can you protect your children? A serial molester will tell you, and his story is absolutely frightening. It's a mask, a facade, and what is a superb actor and he comes to get what he wants. He is every parent's worst nightmare, and he is our top story. A man who bef befriends a family only to abuse the children. He's done it hundreds of times, and now he wants to warn parents about how he got away with it. News for Utah's Paul Murphy joins us now. Paul, this guy has done so much damage. Why does he want to help now? Well, Randall, he says he's had a change of heart, and that change came after many years in prison. <laughs> when you're not watching your children, someone else might be. This man we'll call John was looking until he finally got caught. Well, the first thing I think is very important for the parents to realize is that the molester is not the stereotype that is given in the media nowadays. Quote, the dirty old man in a park with a candy bar. More likely, he's a family friend. A molester like myself, I used guile. You know, I came on as a friend when I really wasn't. I was their worst enemy. And uh, trickery and lies, all that kind of stuff or a babysitter. Parents would bring in their children and tell them, now you do what John Doe here says, make mommy and daddy proud of you. From that instant on, I owned their children. They totally disempowered those children. By using those children like that, after I was through molesting them, all I had to do was say, okay, you've been real good. Mom and dad are really gonna be proud of you. So I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and tell your mom and dad this for you, you know, how good you've been, so don't worry about it. And none of them ever talked. Is there anything a parent could do to protect their children from someone like you? I mean, you sound very devious. I am. Yes, they can, but they've got to be aware of what's going on around them at all times. What would you look for in a victim? Basically, I look for a child with very low self-esteem. Uh, generally, in a picture of 30 or 40 children, there'll be at least three or four of them looking down, standing in a closed body position. Those, that tells me instantly there's something going on in that child's life. Either they're lonely, they're hurting, or somebody may have molested them already. And John speaks from experience. He says he's molested as many as 500 children. That's an awful lot of sorrow. But he was only convicted twice. As a parent, I'm not very encouraged by what I've heard from you. Those are cold hard facts. And I don't know what else to tell you. You're scaring the hell out of me. Good, and it's working. John even has some advice for parents. He says parents should know where their children are at all times. Do criminal checks on all caregivers. Have frank talks with your kids so they will be comfortable talking when someone acts inappropriately. But do we really want to get advice from a child molester? Tonight at 10, I'll show you how police are using John like the FBI used Hannibal Lecter in the movie Silence of the Lambs. I'm offering you a psychological profile of Buffalo Bill based on the case evidence. A look at how John is teaching police how to catch child molesters tonight at 10. Disturbing is an understatement on this story, Paul. Um, does he have any advice for kids? Run and scream like the Dickens. He says a lot of his, these kids got away from him just by doing that. Well, here's my question for you folks. Do you think a serial child sex abuser can be rehabilitated and safely returned to society? I'm going to be looking for your answers down below on this one. And thank you for being professional in your responses. 
This is a difficult subject and it generates a lot of emotion in us as we think about this kind of abuse happening to the most vulnerable among us, our children. Well, I hope this segment helps you better understand this kind of predator. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and ring the bell. And remember, you can find Profiling Evil on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And please go to our webpage at ProfilingEvil.com. And by the way, if you like podcasts, check us out on your favorite podcast platform at Profiling Evil. Thanks for supporting us, and we'll see you soon at the next crime scene.